really appreciate that. Bianca, over to you. Yeah, thanks. And that will be a bit of a hard act to follow, but I will try. Um, yeah, my name is uh, Bianca Kama. I used to be a librarian. I'm now independent. And one of the things I'm doing is doing analysis on open metadata, open infrastructure. And I've been doing quite a bit uh, engaging with Open Alex, also to just do some research on the coverage of Open Alex in comparison to other open data sources. And for today, I'd like to focus on uh, on one particular type of information, which is abstracts. And there's an important reason for that. There's an important reason why abstracts as a type of metadata are important. One of the reasons, one of the ways in which abstracts are used are of course for discovery. A lot of discovery systems search basically titles and abstracts, some of them also full text, but a lot of them are built on titles, abstracts, and other metadata. And especially with the rise of generative AI, as we've seen with Scopus AI and a lot of other applications, that use of abstracts is only going to gain importance. So also both the, on one hand, the movement to making abstract more openly available is gaining importance on the other hand, and I'm totally going to stealing Jessica's phrase, non-supportive publishers, uh, a number of publishers also trying to more keep ab abstracts closed and seeing that also as a business model. So I think it's, especially in this point in time, it's an important type of information. Apart from discovery, uh, abstracts also know, uh, used in generating knowledge graphs, um, in various applications and also used in systematic reviews as a basis for screening. So I think these, I hope these few examples show why openly available abstracts are important. And um, to try and increase the uh, proportion of abstracts that are openly available, in 2020, the Initiative for Open Abstracts was started, which I'm also involved in, uh, full disclosure, which encouraged publishers to make their abstracts openly available via, uh, via COSREF. Currently, three and a half years later, where are we now? Um, I apologize for the small font size of this graph, but for an overall picture, what you can see in this graph on the y-axis is the number of publications, um, number of journal articles from different publishers uh, in the last um, two years, two or three years. And on the horizontal axis, the percentage of those journal articles that have open abstracts in COSREF. And without looking at all the individual names, overall, you can see that there are large differences between publishers, that many of the larger publishers uh, are lagging behind. Uh, Elsevier, Taylor and Francis, IEEE, ACS are really holdouts as they were in open citations. In, there's no surprise there. Um, Spring and Nature is a bit special in that they made a conscious decision only to make the abstracts of their open access articles openly available. So there's some open abstracts in Crossref. It's growing, uh, advocacy is growing, but it's certainly um, also a lot of abstracts are still not available via Crossref. And that's where Open Alex comes in as an interesting additional source of Open, Alex, of open abstracts. Open Alex collects abstracts from external sources, including Crossref, but also other sources like PubMed and also content obtained by web crawling, including publisher landing pages. And interestingly, they're stored in Open Alex as an inverted index, a list of abstracts words and the position of, oh, sorry, of the, there we are, um, a list of the words and the position of the words in the abstract as a way to circumvent the copyright claims on abstracts. So there are a lot of abstracts also available in Open Alex. And what I did um, is compare for the same set of publishers that we have on the initiative of Open Abstracts chart, for the, those same set of publishers look what percentage of journal articles have abstracts in Crossref and what percentage have um, abstracts in Open Alex. And there you can see for including for those big publishers that were still not providing abstracts uh, to COSREF, Elsevier, TNF, ACS, IEEE, OpenAlex does manage to capture a large proportion of, uh, of abstracts. 
there are some other publishers that um, for which Open Alex does not have that much added value. Uh, so it differs by publisher. And there are a couple of potential explanations for that. I'll get to that in a second. But overall, Open Alex does have a very much added value in terms of open abstracts. Thinking about reasons why, um, what, what makes capturing those abstracts easier and what might uh, provide a barrier uh, to that. It's important, first of all, to realize that not all journal content has abstracts. So we cannot expect in this picture to for every publisher that percentage to be at 100%. Lots of humanities publishers um, have a lot of content also in their journals that just don't have abstracts. So sometimes it's just not there. Um, it's also the question uh, whether all landing pages are harvested for all publishers. And that's really a question also for me to open Alex, whether uh, it's specifically uh, decided for specific publishers to, to, um, to add them to that list of publishers for which landing pages are harvested. Another question is whether there's additional harvesting perhaps of abstracts from repositories and whether that might increase the number of abstracts that are available. And then a final, more like a barrier, there are copyright considerations and some publishers uh, really try to use that as a reason to block actually harvesting of abstracts. If you go back to that uh, chart, that's also the reason why you would see for Springer Nature that also Open Alex doesn't have a lot of abstracts and that's specifically for that, for that reason. So there's still a lot of considerations and a lot of potential perhaps to increase that and other forces sort of working against that. And that illustrates again, sort of the, I think the power play that we're in at the moment. We discussed why openly available abstracts are important. I briefly managed, uh, mentioned also generative AI that only increased the importance of, uh, of abstracts in scholarly communication. And that brings with it a lot of additional questions to consider. The legality of using licensed and unlicensed copyrighted material. Implications of various creative common licenses. Are, is CC BY, is that enough? Is that, does that also imply um, agreeing to having material used for uh, in generative AI? Role of fair use in the US um, to perhaps stimulate use of material, use of database rights in the AU that might limit uh, harvesting and, um, and reuse of material in databases. Um, so those are all forces at play. Then for, uh, for authors also, the desirability of the use of scholarly material, including abstracts. Do authors want their abstracts their full text, their publications to be used in generative AI, perhaps because it's high quality textual information that actually increases the functionality, or would they be against that because they don't want it to be used by commercial generative AI? And we hear in this discourse, I'm hearing both sides. And I, sometimes I call it like, it's the license discussion uh, on steroids. I think it's uh, it's really brought to the fore a lot of these considerations, and which is brings us uh, in a very interesting point in time. So perhaps that's why I would like to what I would like to uh, to close with. Abstracts in themselves hold a somewhat special position. They're considered both metadata, which in themselves are not subject to copyright, but they're also as textual uh, piece of text. They're also part of creative works, which are subject to copyright. So whether abstracts are copyrighted and or not is interesting in itself. I think we can see that abstracts are currently in danger, perhaps increasingly so, of being treated as a commodity rather than open research information. And open availability of abstracts in Colsef and or in OpenLX and in other systems counteracts this development. And I think that leads us to the final question, how open do we as scholarly community actually want abstracts to be? And once we decided on that, what's the best way to achieve that? 
It can be either through Crossref or through harvesting of open Alex. And hopefully those two approaches can also enrich each other and um, together uh, work to open maximum availability of open abstracts. I didn't hear you say one minute, so I assume I'm on time, which is surprising. Yes, you're right at one minute. Great. Then, um, yeah, I think to have given you, I hope to have given you both like some analysis results that you can go back to and look at, but also giving you some food for thought uh, based on that availability of abstracts. Uh, what does it actually mean and what do we want for abstracts? So I'd like to close with that. Thank you, Bianca. That was great. I'm realizing after these first two presentations that um, either of them could have been a full full webinar that we could have had great conversation. But I like your point to start conversations here.